Hello and welcome my presentation. My name is Orhan Ermiş. I'm a postdoctoral uh, researcher at Eurocom. In my presentation, I will talk about the privacy preserving neural network classification that we done uh, that we did uh, during the Papaya project, which is an H2020 European Union project. First of all, I would like to thank COSIC team to, uh, for hosting me uh, in the seminar. And I will start my presentation with the big picture of the Papaya project. Before going into details, I will introduce the concept that we deal with the, in our, in, uh, under the scope of Papaya project. So, um, as you already know, uh, companies, recently companies started to use data analytics tools and machine learning tools to uh, improve their businesses or um, <coughs> to uh, make profit over uh, these solutions because the, uh, they need to compete with their competitors in the sector and uh, they can provide uh, many, many efficient solutions based on their business definition. However, uh, with the GDPR, uh, this, the execution of machine learning and data analytics tools become relied uh, uh, on the, uh, some strict rules. These rules are uh, consist of the uh, protection over the sensitive data that are collected from the data subjects, which are the customers of uh, these companies. So uh, instead of directly uh, applying the machine learning technique or the data analytics technique, therefore the companies need to use some protection mechanism over the data or uh, they need to protect their model from the model theft. Therefore, uh, in Papaya project, uh, we mostly concentrate on pri privacy by design solutions. Um, and in this presentation, I will uh, present the privacy preserving neural network classification solutions uh, under the scope of Papaya project. So based on these definitions, uh, we need th three main items to protect by uh, designing such a such kind of a solution. These are the data collected from data subjects, uh, queries, which is the uh, actually the execute inputs for the uh, in order to execute the classification task, and its response, of course, uh, and also the models generated by the uh, by the uh, companies who, who wants to benefit from uh, this type of business. This is the outline of my presentation. First of all, uh, I will give br brief uh, information about the about the uh, advanced cryptographic primitives. Later on, uh, I will talk, I will briefly introduce neural network structures, and and then we will, I will uh, present how how we can provide privacy for these neural network classification tasks. Then uh, I will start talking about our solutions for the Papaya project, which is the the first one is the Erdmia classification, and also we have a benchmark of uh, different uh, versions of this solution and I will give the benchmark between these solutions and finally uh, I will give another uh, solution which will not be deployed, deployed to a Papaya platform but uh, we, we studied uh, this concept uh, in the, under the scope of Papaya project which, call, which allows the model provider to control the model when it is uh, uploaded to third-party servers and uh, and afterwards the model provider can decide who who can use this model in order to uh, make some, run some classification tasks so uh, I will start with the advanced cryptography primitives as you already know for the uh, neural network classification we mostly use homomorphic encryption or two-party computation Briefly, uh, homomorphic encryption uh, allows us to 
run uh, to execute some operations over the encrypted data. Uh, whereas in the two-party computation, uh, this this is a specific version of multi-party computation, and in this concept, uh, multiple parties can run some common function uh, by using their inputs. And at the end of this execution, either uh, both parties can obtain the result or only one party can obtain the result. So uh, when we compare the properties of these two uh, primitives, homomorphic encryption uh, based neural network classification systems are non-interactive. Uh, there's only one interaction to uh, send the query and and uh, as a response for this to get the classification result to the client party. But in a two-part computation, they are interactive, especially for matrix multiplication, for example. We are uh, this solutions that rely on these two, this concept makes many, many com communications between each other. Homomorphic encryption in general use, generally they are uh, convenient or suitable for uh, linear operations, but for two-part computation, we can uh, use some, we can make some, uh, we can convert some, we can do some uh, nonlinear operations as well. Homomorphic encryption tasks, classification tasks are expensive in computation costs, whether in the two-part computation they are efficient in computation costs, but they are expensive in communication costs. But in uh, homomorphic encryption, as I said in the beginning, they are non-interactive and they require less communication costs for this. So uh, from now on, I will give brief definition of neural networks. These are uh, supervised learning techniques. Uh, in the recent years, we we, we start, start to hear more about this because of deep neural networks. And uh, they, they are, may, they are uh, pretty common in the general purpose classification tasks. And they are really suitable for the uh, privacy enhancing technologies. That is why people are uh, studying on neural networks, neural networks classification. They have two phases. The first one is the training phase. In this phase, we first decide on the architecture of the neural network, and then we start to feed the neural network with the labeled information, labeled inputs. And uh, with these labeled inputs, the network starts to learn about the uh, behaviors of the uh, inputs. Then at the end of this classification, uh, at the end of this training phase, neural network model becomes uh, eligible to make some, some uh, decisions over the input, which is not labeled. The second part, after the training phase part, as I said, um, is considered as the uh, classification phase. In, in, in this classification phase, we again feed the net neural network, but this time without, using, without giving the labels, and we are expecting this model to make decisions on these inputs. Mainly, uh, neural, network, neural networks can consist of and many layers, and based on the classification task, you are deciding which type of layers you will use in your architecture. But in general, they are grouped in four different groups. These are activation layer, pooling layer, fully connected layer, and convolution layer. Uh, the activation layer is the is used for the uh, for the uh, activate some properties in the inputs we can uh, consider each layer as a as a function and we are feeding each layer with an input as you can see in the figure and uh, for the activation layer it takes some input and activates some property in, over this input for the pooling layer we mostly use max pooling 
which means takes the maximum value from inputs and maybe for some cases uh, we, since we mostly deal with the matrices we, we have a large matrix we divide into small matrices and uh, for each small matrix we are trying to obtain the maximum value of it of these matrices and <clears throat> for the full connected layer we must use them for the input and output layers uh, they, they they just apply some weights and bias over the input and for convolution layer they are mostly used for the uh, image classification for instance in our case since we are dealing with the arithmetic classification we don't use it uh, for the arithmetic classification tasks but if we apply this on the image classification then we need to use convolution layer which strides over the input and gets important information from this input as uh, as as other layers so these layers can be organized in different manners as i said in the previous uh, slide this can if if the problem is image classification then we use convolution layers if this is not a uh, in image classification we will use just for it uh, just for the uh, classification of arrhythmia in our case we can directly uh, use for the connected layers instead of that another important uh, thing related to these layers are the underlying operations uh, because based on these operations we will make decisions when we convert them into privacy preserving variables uh, for convolution layer and the fully connected layer, we use matrix multiplication. For activation layer, we use some uh, nonlinear operations like sigma, tan, h, or relu. Uh, for pooling uh, layers, we use sum or max pooling. So, uh, and when we convert our solution to privacy preserving variant, uh, we try to find the equivalent version of it, and we will see them in the uh, in the upcoming slides. So uh, our problem is privacy preserving neural network classification. Therefore, uh, as as we since we can we cannot apply directly uh, this classification type ta tasks into the crypto world. <coughs> sorry, uh, we need to deal with some problems in this case. These are additional overhead in terms of computation or communication and, and or communication. And the second problem is complex operations. As I said in the previous slides, for activation layer, we are using nonlinear operations like sigmoid or tan h. So we need to uh, deal with these operations. Neural networks, of course, there are some binarized neural network variants, uh, mainly operate with the real numbers. But uh, when it comes to privacy enhancing technologies, we mostly use integers. So th this is the third problem. And therefore, uh, we need to make some approximations of these complex operations or real numbers. And maybe we need, we need to change our architecture and reduce the input size for some problems to, to obtain a better, uh, better efficiency in our case. Therefore, uh, we have, as you already know, in, in general, in machine learning, uh, machine learning studies, the main problem, the main trade-off is between the uh, accuracy and the efficiency. But as, a, as the privacy enhancing technologies challenges, we are adding privacy on top of this trade-off. Therefore, therefore uh, we need to deal with the privacy versus accuracy challenge and privacy versus efficiency challenge. So uh, in, in this case, uh, as I said, we need to do some approximations or we need to uh, make some reductions uh, over the input while processing it. So uh, how can we convert neural net these neural networks layers in order to um, obtain more efficient version for the privacy enhancing version of it? 
Uh, we need to apply some convolution, uh, some approximations of it. Uh, for instance, for convolution and fully connected layers, since they op they consist of only matrix multiplication or maybe some for some operations, for some addition addition operations, we don't need to do a, any addition approximation for this. As I said in, in a couple of slides ago, pooling functions there are there are also pooling layers. For pooling functions, instead of using max pooling, we, we may use uh, summation, uh, summing up all values for a given input, for example. Uh, for the activation layer, instead of using tanh or sigmoid, we can use x square and jelly. And when it comes to dealing with the real numbers, we can multiply the input with the powers of 10 to make it integers, or we can apply directly shifting to it. So uh, now, I will continue with the uh, with the arithmetic classification, which is one of our solutions for the Popeye project. As you as you may know, arithmetic arithmia is the uh, is considered as the uh, abnormal heart rhythms. So this can cause several uh, damages over the human body. Therefore, it is better to detect it uh, in early stages. At early stages. And usually, when you go to the hospital to see the doctor, to see the cardiologist, they uh, record your ECG signals, heart rhythms, and since they, they are the expert on this, uh, this, this kind of diseases, this arrhythmias, arrhythmia, uh, they can, uh, by observing your heart rhythms, they can make a decision of, uh, about the uh, possible diseases that you, you may have. Since uh, these are pretty generic, um, and also uh, if we have the expert knowledge, if we add the expert knowledge on top of this, uh, in addition to these inputs, then we can optimize uh, arrhythmia detection. One appropriate create a way to do this to apply machine learning techniques, particularly neural network classification. And in this case, uh, we studied on uh, arrhythmia classification by using neural networks. So uh, before, uh, as I said in a couple of slides ago, we need to convert the neural network architecture into a more convenient way for the privacy enhancing technologies. Therefore, uh, in order to do this, we, uh, we added another uh, layer before the neural network classification, which is called as the uh, principal component analysis, and it mainly reduces the input size. It just uh, directly applies the dimension reduction over the input, and you obtain some uh, more meaningful results. Therefore, uh, it has an algorithm. I will not go into details of this algorithm, but at the end of this uh, principal component analysis, uh, we need to have two common values beforehand in order to apply this. These are the P matrix, which is the K eigenvectors with highest eigenvalues, and the mean matrix. Therefore, when we uh, have the input S as in here, we need to subtract mean from the S and multiply this value with the matrix. And then once we apply this, we will have more condensed information in order to process by the uh, neural network classification model. However, uh, since these M and P values are obtained by using the previous data, uh, this may leak some information for the <coughs> for the uh, for the third parties because in this case, before executing the input over the uh, neural network, we need to apply this first. And in order to apply this, we need to have have uh, M and P values in the client side, which may cause leakage in our system. 
So therefore, in our privacy preserving arrhythmia classifier, we propose three different models. The first model consists of uh, operates, uh, uh, executes the PCA in the clear text format, and then applies two-party computation as a neural network classification. The second model uh, directly applies PCA and neural network classification as a two PC solution. And the third solution directly applies neural network classification, which is uh, developed by using two part computation library. Therefore, uh, afterwards, we are deciding uh, whether the uh, patient has an arrhythmia or not. So, uh, in order to uh, apply uh, in order to develop our two-party computation-based uh, neural network classification, we first need to find a neural network model specifically designed for arrhythmia classification. Luckily, uh, we can obtain a small neural network architecture for this. We have two fully connected layers and one activation layer, which we can use x square value interchangeably. And also, we have a softmax layer to obtain the maximum value of the over the outputs. So this network is a pretty small network. It has 14 hidden neurons, and the input size is 180 for the model three which means uh, there is no PCA version. And if there's a PCA, then we first process this 180 samples, and then um, we obtain input with a size of 16, and we process it our, with our neural network architecture. And uh, in our case, we just consider the 16 arrhythmia classes. So uh, our network has the accuracy of 96.51, which is a pretty good accuracy for this kind of solutions. And we applied the arrhythmia classification based on uh, two-party computation with this manner. Uh, in the Papaya version of this solution, server-side component is the uh, untrusted Papaya server, Papaya platform. And also we have the client-side component, which is our partners, uh, computers in our partners' premises, which is MCI, Medicinics Italy in our case. And there's an application that operates on web browsers or as a, or as a uh, mobile application in this case. And uh, we upload input from the this interface and uh, the, our client-side component provides the input for the uh, common function ex execution. And on the other hand, the server-side component provides the model for the two-party computation. And therefore, uh, we provide the privacy of the patients, in other words, data privacy, and also we provide the secrecy of the neural network model, which is also known as the service confidentiality. These are the results for the, for the execution of a single signal. So we just, I just put the uh, time and base, o, base OT uh, operations in terms of seconds. As you can see, uh, we did many tests on that. Um, we, in one version, we just applied the Boolean circuits. And in other versions, we applied arithmetic circuits as well, which are more efficient in our case because we have only a small amount of matrix multiplication. But in any case, it is, it is more efficient than Boolean circuits. And uh, as you can see, uh, the time required to execute the model one takes 116, 17.5 uh, seconds, whereas it, it's, it corresponds to 1.2 seconds in, in our model. So as you can see, uh, our model one gives the better performance. Which one was the model one? Uh, this is the uh, model that applies PCA in, over the clear text data, and then uh, executes the two-party computation over the, the reduced inputs. So uh, this is obvi obvious to provide the best results for that. Um, on the other end, uh, two part, uh, the other two models are also operate in a course of 
du uh, durations, like the model two, which applies PCA and two particle computation in uh, PCA and neural network classification in two PC, and the model three directly applies two party uh, neural network classification. We observe that truncation version two is better than version one. The version one was the shifting, this the second one was the multiplying with the powers of 10. And in real world scenario, as you can see, we can uh, process one signal in a very short time, like the one second, and which is pretty good for the real world scenario. Also, uh, we compared the uh, communication costs of these solutions. It's obvious that Boolean circuits requires uh, more communication uh, more communication costs uh, to accomplish operations. Uh, whereas in the other solutions, since we ap directly apply uh, arith um, arithmetic shares, these are this provides better so results as you can see in our solutions model one since this applies direct pca it will has a uh, it has a really short input and operate all over this input is um, much efficient than the other ones but there is a leakage of course so uh, afterwards we provide a benchmark study over the privacy preserved neural network classification solutions of Popeye project. Um, in this case, um, for this particular case, both uh, IBM Haifa and Orange from France were also working on the privacy preserved neural network classification. Therefore, uh, we compared our studies uh, with respect to two different neural network models. The first one is the uh, arrhythmia classifier, but this time we just uh, discarded the softmax layer. And the second model was the uh, image classifi classifier, which consists of uh, one convolution layer, two fully connected layers, and two activation layers. And it has also a uh, 97.39% uh, accuracy. So these are the results for the uh, fully homomorphic based solution, two particle page solution, and hybrid solution, which combines FHE and 2PC at the same time for some operations. As you can see, two particle computation is better to, in terms of processing, processing a single heartbeat, but uh, for patch processing, FHE based solution is better. And, um, for the communication cost, since uh, FHE-based solution only requires communication for just receiving the input and uh, sending the result of the classification, of course, they are more efficient. But for other two solutions, directly apply two party computation solutions better. And uh, for the classification of a single image, online computation cost of hybrid hybrid solution is better. But in total, uh, two-part computation-based solution is better. Uh, for the uh, batch processing, uh, FHE-based solution is better, provides better results, but uh, and also it requires less communication. But for the comparison of um, two PC-based solution and hybrid solution, um, directly applied. Um, two-part neural network classification provides better results in terms of communication cost. Also, uh, I need to note that uh, for two PC-based solution and FHE-based solution, there are, uh, we were using, uh, we and Orange were using uh, simli gates, but in hybrid solution, there were no uh, batch processing option. So that is why uh, this hybrid solution is um, not that compatible, uh, comparable results with other two methods. And this is the uh, total communication cost for 2048 images. And uh, in, in terms of this, hybrid solution provides better results. So uh, 
the last solution, the last contribution for the Popeye project, as I said in the beginning, this will be not deployed uh, to the Popeye platform. But uh, we came up with, with an idea. Actually, this is the study of one of the PhD students in here who uh, also uh, works in Popeye project together with, uh, under the supervision of Melatonin. Uh, is to control the models by using the cryptographic primitives. Uh, especially for the, uh, for the homomorphic encryption algorithms, once you deploy your algorithm to the untrusted cloud server, then you totally lose the control over, the, over this model if you are a model provider. And uh, then, uh, any party who registered on this system can easily query this model with, with their own input. And the model provider does not have a right to control this. And in this study, we try to uh, provide such a solution that controls the model by using cryptographic primitives. So uh, in this case, we consider that we have a trusted third party in the setup phase and it distributes uh, distributes the uh, proxy encryption keys beforehand and then it goes offline afterwards uh, while uh, executing the classification task the model provider uploads the model uh, which is encrypted by using the TT trusted third parties public key uh, and the query uh, sends its input and mask by using which is encrypted by using the trusted third parties public key then a uh, cloud server adds a mask on it and send it to the model provider. Model provider unmask this mask R value because these were uh, distributed to the queries beforehand who registered to the uh, model provider system. Then uh, it's, it adds an, another mask for this and send it to the cloud server. Cloud server uh, unmasks this, uh, unmask the uh, mask value that is uh, that is added in the previous in the previous transmission, and executes the neural network classification and obtains the result. Then send it back to the uh, model provider with a new mask. Then uh, model provider using use uh, re-encryption method which the uh, key obtained in, by, by the trusted third party and uh, send it to the cloud server. Then cloud server unmask the value and send the result to the uh, query. So uh, we use the Arcmia classification case study for this. And we were using Palisat library for homomorphic proxy re-encryption, which is HPF VRNS. And uh, we made some tests on this for, for our model. We call it one-to-many model. And uh, as you can see, classification task requires 26.3 seconds. But this will be executed over the uh, cloud server. Therefore, it is not our main problem. And also, when we compare, compare it with the one-to-one -one model, the classification task requires 1.81 seconds. But this will be done in the model provide, provider's premises. Therefore, uh, in this case, uh, the model provider needs to execute, spend 1.81 seconds for a simple classification task. On, but in, uh, in, in our case, it takes 0 0.036 seconds. So this is, uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thanks for your patience and participation. Uh, it was, again, a great pleasure to make this presentation. And uh, thanks for hosting me for this, uh, this seminar.